Introduction A subject of international law is a person or an entity with an international personality. It is capable of possessing international rights and obligations and can take certain actions on the international level. Traditionally, states have been the only subjects of international law. However, with the establishment of international organizations, it has become the need of time that an international legal personality be granted to these entities. Besides states and international organizations, individuals are also considered subjects of international law. A leading case reflecting legal pragmatism regarding subjects of international law was the reparation for injuries suffered in the service of the United Nations case, 1949. So what really is a subject of law? A subject of law is a being upon which the rules confer rights and impose duties. Whereas an object of law is burdened by no such competence. The law commands its subjects, but it merely regulates the disposition of its objects. So the subjects of international law are basically two, states and non-state entities. States include countries like the UK, USA and Canada. Non-state entities are further divided into three categories. First are individuals, like you, me and us. Second is international organizations like the United Nations, the International Court of Justice, and the International Cricket Council. And the third category is multinational companies such as Unilever and Shell. Theories regarding subjects of international law There are the main three theories regarding subjects of international law presented by jurists. First States alone are the subjects of international law. Second, individuals alone are the subjects of international law. And third, states are the main subjects, but to a lesser extent, individuals and certain non-state entities are also subjects of international law. Let's discuss states as subjects of international law. Professor Oppenheim opined that states are the only subjects of international law. For example, the Soviet Union still adheres to the view that states are the main subjects of international law. Soviet international law experts are unanimous on this point. Criticism on this theory is that this theory fails to explain the case of slaves and pirates. Under international law, pirates have been conferred some rights by the community of states. Similarly, pirates are treated as enemies of mankind. Response to this criticism by Professor Oppenheim is that he regards pirates, slaves, etc. as objects of international law. Second theory is that individuals alone as subjects of international law. Professor Kelson and Westlake are the chief exponents of this concept that the duties and rights of the state are actually the duties and rights of men who compose it. Criticism on this theory is that the primary concern of international law is the rights and duties of states. However, the Permanent Court of Justice adheres to the traditional view that only states can be a party to international proceedings. So what is the place of individuals in international law? Some of the provisions of international law under which rights have been conferred upon individuals and obligations been imposed are Number 1. Pirates. Under international law, pirates are treated as enemies of mankind. Hence, every state is entitled to apprehend them. International law also imposes the obligation on parties slash states not to engage in piracy. Number 2. Harmful acts of individuals. International law provides provisions of punishment against those individuals who tend to be detrimental to cordial relations among states. For example, Ex Part Petrov, 1971, decided by the Supreme Court of Australia. The facts state that two persons were found throwing explosives at the Soviet Chancery. It was held that, if a person causes harm to the ambassador of another state, under international law, he deserves stringent punishment. Number 3. 
foreigners. International law regulates the conduct of foreigners too. According to international law, it is the duty of a state to give the same rights to foreigners that it confers upon its own citizens. Number 4. War criminals. War criminals can be punished under international law. It is based on the principle that the rules relating to war crimes are not only for states, but for individuals also. For example, Nuremberg and Tokyo tribunals have established the principle that since crimes are committed by individuals, they are to be punished. Number 5. Espionage. Espionage is a crime under international law. Spies come under it. Espionage agencies target the illegal drug trade, terrorists as well as state actors. For example, CIA case officer Alder James spied for the Russians for nearly a decade before his arrest in 1994. Number Treaties Some treaties confer upon individuals some rights by which they can claim compensation or damages against a state. For example, the Treaty of Versailles 1919 provided that any individual can file suit against Germany for compensation of damages. Number 7. Provisions of the United Nations Charter The UN Charter has given certain importance to individuals and their rights. Its preamble uses the words people of the United Nations, which is not incidental, but a deliberate attempt. Moreover, United Nations adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. It discusses in detail the rights and freedoms of the individuals. Besides, in 1948, the United Nations General Assembly UNGA adopted the Genocides Convention. It imposes an obligation on individuals in respect of crimes of genocide. Number 8. Rights Given Immediately International law confers upon the individual certain rights, not only immediately, but immediately. For example, the Convention of the Settlement of Investment Disputes Between State and Their Nationals, 1965. It enables the persons who invest their money in foreign countries to have certain rights even against the state concerned. Number 9. Individual versus State International law recognizes the capacity of individuals to carry out international procedural action. For example, the International Covenant of Human Rights, 1966 and the Optional Protocol confers rights directly upon individuals. Along with the UN Commission of Human Rights, they have enabled individuals to send petitions even against their own states. An important case to reassure the claim of individuals being subjects of international law is the Reparation for Injuries case, 1949. The facts are that the United Nations appointed Count Folke Bernadotte of Sweden as the mediator in the first Israeli-Arab conflict. Bernadotte angered many Israeli extremists and was ultimately assassinated in Jerusalem by a Zionist terrorist group Lehi. The legal claim made in his regard is that the UN General Assembly asked the ICJ for an advisory opinion on the matter if the UN can make an international claim to demand reparations for its agent, in service, injured by a state. In aftermath, ICJ determined that the UN can claim internationally against a state to obtain reparation for its injured agent. ICJ rejected the notion that only states are subjects of international law. In fact, other entities like individuals and international organizations also fall in its scope. The analysis of this case is as follows. Number 1. The international personality of individuals not only confers upon them rights and duties, but also recognizes their capacity for international procedural action. Number 2. International duties and responsibilities have become a part of international customary law. Number 3. 
There are many political and moral reasons for recognizing the right of an individual to bring his claim against a foreign state. However, their procedural capacity is still grossly deficient. Now let's discuss state, individuals and certain non-state entities as subjects of international law. This theory not only combines the first two views, but also includes international organizations and certain non-state entities as subjects of international law. Taking individuals as an example. European Convention on Human Rights, 1950 under which European EU Commission and European EU Courts were established to investigate violations of human rights. Taking international organizations as an example. The advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice ICJ the in case of reparation for injuries suffered in service of the United Nations may be cited. ICJ decided that the UN is an international person, a subject of international law, capable of possessing rights and duties and has the capacity to maintain its rights by bringing international claims. Taking non-state entities as an example. Minorities have rights under the Treaty of Versailles, 1919, in Articles 297 and 304. Likewise, Article 8 of the Constitution, the of World Health Organization, who permits recognition of insurgents. Bangladesh became a member of WHO long before it was admitted as a member of the United Nations. Conclusion Modern international law considers the individual and non-state entities along with states as its subjects and does not hold them as its objects, merely. However, they do not enjoy the same quality of importance as states do. Mostly, it lacks the procedural capacity to bring about action in most cases. Article 34 of the International Court of Justice should be amended in order that individuals may also have direct access to the court. Only in this way, the true purpose of international law will be served.